Hello and welcome to this episode of Danny's Tips. In this video, I'll show you how to create your own film light preset in Adobe Lightroom. But instead of creating a single specific look, you'll learn how to achieve common film effects using a step-by-step -step method. So whether you want something that is natural and subtle, or faded and strong, you'll know how to achieve the look that you want. You'll also learn some tips on how to keep your preset lightweight with minimal impact on Lightroom's performance, and what settings you shouldn't touch at all. By the end of this video, you'll know how to create a high quality preset that you can even sell. If you want to take your work to the next level, try out some of my Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets at sparklestock.com. There are gigabytes of presets, actions, product mockups, and graphics for you to download. I'm constantly updating your website with new products. Check it out at sparklestock.com and use the promo code DENNY for 10% off. Let's start off with the tones. For this, we'll be using the tone curve. The tone curve in Lightroom has two modes. You want to be in the point curve mode which you can switch to by clicking on this button. The point curve mode gives you much more flexibility and control. So not everyone is fluent with the tone curve. If you already know how to use it, you can create any tone curve you like. But for this tutorial, I'll show a technique that makes it simple for beginners. First, add three points to a line like this. Try to make the points align with the grid in the background. Now you should have a total of five points. One for the blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. You can drag any of the points up and down to adjust them. If you want to make the blacks brighter for their faded look, you can drag the bottom left point upwards. If you want to darken the shadows, you can drag the second point downwards. The same pattern for the rest of the points. To make things easier, here are some common tone curves that people use. One of the main characteristics of film looks is the color shifting. Now just to be clear, this is not for tinting the shadows or highlights. I will show you how to do that later. This is simply to shift the colors. And we're going to start off with the hue, then the lightness, and then finally the saturation. I usually like to start off with the reds and oranges because those hues affect the skin tones. With these colors, you should make very small changes. I don't usually go more than 5% with the reds and oranges. For the blues and greens, you can make stronger adjustments. I'm going to shift the greens towards the blues and the blues towards the greens. Keep adjusting the colors until you get the look that you like. But also keep in mind that right now we're just focusing on the hue. We'll do the luminance and saturation afterwards. After adjusting the hue, we can adjust the luminance. The reason why we're adjusting the luminance before the saturation is because it's easier and more precise to do it first. The luminance basically affects how bright or dark the color is. For example, if you want to make the skies and water darker, you can darken the blues and cyans. Now some of you might be asking, how is this different than brightening or darkening with the tone curve? The answer is that the tone curve lets you make areas brighter or darker based on your brightness while the luminance lets you make areas brighter or darker based on your color. If you have any programming experience, you can think of it as an if and then statement. Anyways, just like with the hue, you want to be careful with the red and orange adjustments because those colors can affect skin tones. 
Finally, we're going to adjust the saturation. This is the easiest one to adjust, which is why we saved it for last. Adjust these settings just like what you did with the two other color adjustments. However, if you're going to significantly increase or decrease the saturation for all of the colors, it's best to make those adjustments with the saturation slider first, and then make these smaller changes in the individual color saturation setting. It just makes it easier to tweak the preset afterwards. Now that we're done with the color, we can tint the highlights and shadows. There's two ways to do this. You can do it with the split toning adjustment, which is easier, but it's also not that flexible. Basically, you pick a color for the highlights and shadows, adjust the saturation, and then the balance. If you need more flexibility, the better way of doing this is with the RGB tone curve. In the tone curve adjustment, you can switch to the red, green, or blue channel from the drop down menu here. But when it comes to RGB tone curve, most people think that it's really hard to use. It's not that hard, it just looks hard because the interface for it hasn't been updated. But the tool can be much easier to use if you imagine that the tone curve looks like this. Just to be clear, you can't actually make Lightroom look like this. I just superimposed this to show you how you should be imagining the tone curves. For the red channel, imagine that it looks like this. For the green channel, imagine that it looks like this. Same thing for a blue channel. By memorizing and imagining this whenever you use a tone curve, it will be much easier to use. For example, if you want to give your photo a green tint in the shadows, like with the Fuji Superior 1600 film, then switch to a green channel and lift the blacks up like this. Or if you want something more towards teal, which is between blue and green, you can also lift the blacks in the blue channel. You can add more points, but for beginners, I recommend sticking to a total of 5 points per channel, and keeping the horizontal position aligned with the grid in the background. If you want to learn more about RGB tone curve, I highly recommend watching my video on how to use the tone chart technique in Photoshop, and you can find a link to that in the video description below. When you're done, you can save your preset by clicking on the plus sign in the presets panel. Give the preset a name, and checkmark only the settings that you use. You also want to make sure that the process version is checked as well. Now you can apply this preset to any photo you like. While you can create Lightroom presets with nearly every developed setting, there are some that you should avoid. The first settings to avoid are the white balance and exposure. Your presets should never touch these settings, and here's why. Most people start off by fixing the white balance and exposure. For a large catalog, this can take a lot of time. When you apply your preset, your preset will overwrite their white balance exposure setting, forcing them to do all of their retouching from scratch. That's a huge waste of time. Instead, you can do this in the tone curve. To make it brighter, simply nudge the points upwards. For the white balance, you can do it with the green and blue channels. The blue channel is similar to the temperature setting, and the green channel is similar to the tint setting. Another area to avoid is the camera calibration section. A lot of people do require access to this. If you need to adjust the hue, you can always do it from the HSL panel. Finally, avoid excessive develop settings. The more settings you use, the slower your preset will be. A preset with just the tone curves will render incredibly fast, even on video clips. But if you create a preset that uses nearly every developed setting, not only is it slower to render, it will reduce the catalog's performance.
Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to hit the like button. Now you might notice that the effects I applied are stronger than usual. And that's why you can see the difference when we're making the adjustments. But if that has happened to you, and you made a preset that's too strong, you want to fade it out, there's a great plugin called uh, Fader by Capture Monkey. Essentially, it lets you set an opacity for your preset. So if your preset is too strong and you want to make it 50% opacity, you can do it very easily with that plugin. Now the plugin is shareware, so if you like it and you use it a lot, please remember to support the developer and register it. I think he's only asking for $10, which is an amazing price. Anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.